Good. Now, what I want you to do is probably work in twos, uh, ideally twos, unless there is a three. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, one person's hanging around. If you like. Okay. And think about the anatomy. <laughs> so if I come under, you can't really see. If I come under, if I come at the base of the neck, then the first spinous process I'm going to feel is the C2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I'm going to come under, obviously I'm, I can feel the C2 mm -hmm. around here. Now, if you think about C2, if I follow it around, almost like um, come across to where, so find the spinous process of C2 with your finger or fingers, okay? And just follow it around. So you're naturally gonna come on to, at some point you're gonna come on to the transverse processes. The transverse processes, think about the SCM, okay? The SCM is here. The transverse processes are quite far lateral, so they'll be like there on me but I don't want to be on the transverse processes because it's quite it's tender. Boiling. I almost want to be just behind the transverse process onto what do they call the articular pillar. Okay, yeah, so which will be like part of the lamina. Yeah. So if you find the spinous process and just come off that, my fingers are on, the articular pillar is coming down. Okay, on this side they're going to be coming down here, but the TP is going to be here. Okay, the TP is there. The articular is here. Yeah. Where's the spine? Has somebody got a spine I can just show you? You know, if you do a cervical spine class, you know, everybody would have like a uh, anatomy of a cervical, so you can physically see where where we are. So what I'm trying to show you is my fingers. So initially I'm on the C2 there, but I want to bring my fingers around this this line here. Okay, it's called the articular pillar along there. And I continue it on, I'm onto the transverse processes. So what I want to try to do is, is almost roll my fingers off onto this lamina here. And if I just continue a little bit more, I'm gonna be on the articular where the facet joints would be located. You see that? Along here. So I'm almost gonna be coming off there. But I'm naturally gonna be more this way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now if you're looking at say the spine, let's say C2, C3, look at my fingers, so C2 to three to four, to five. Can you see they almost perfectly fit? So I guess an average size hand and an average size neck, the fingers would almost like perfectly just come onto each level, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so you can almost come and think, well, my finger's on C2, the next one will be on C3, to four, to five. Yeah, so you can almost roughly work out where we are. And if you go down as far as you can to the bump, which is the vertebra prominence. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So C7 is called the vertebra prominence. So you can almost say, well, if, I, if I'm roughly on five and I come down a bit, I should be on seven quite quickly. Or you find seven, yeah, the most prominent vertebra, and then you go to six. Five, you naturally find it dips to four. They almost disappear a little bit. Yeah, in here the spinous process is. And as they drift towards three and two, you'll find them again. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's probably not that hard to work out roughly what level you're on. You might differentiate between them, how three or four, but you're going to be either three or four. Yeah, you're not going to be on you know, C1 yeah, or C5. If you, if you drop, drop down from C2 and you've dropped up from C7, you have to be on like four or five, yeah, maybe six, depending. Okay, so there's only seven vertebra. But six, really, because you're not really going to be feeling C1 because you're straight on to two. Yeah, and, if you, and two to three is easy because it's the next one. Okay, and if you're on C7 and you drift to the next one on C6, <clears throat> you've only got five and four to find. You understand what I mean? Yeah, so you're not gonna be far off here, anatomy-wise. Yeah, in terms of level, when you are palpating in here. Try and find the spinous processes. You can see this one very obviously, one, two, three, four, five, C5, but they all have from C2. Most of them, well, the majority will have a bifid spinous process along here, and sometimes you can feel that quite nicely. And that's where the ligamentum nuci will come down onto it. But what I want you to try to do is, because this is going to help us later on, you know, I don't suddenly just say, you know, we're going to manipulate the neck. It's, you know, we're assessing the neck. We're trying to facilitate motion to the neck. And we want to try to find which level is restricted to then change, rather than just manipulating for the sake of manipulating. Many people learn the lumbar and they say, oh, can you watch me do a lumbar roll? I go, yeah, I can watch you. What level, I always say, what level are you going to manipulate? And they go, I'm just going to do it. I said, no, you're not. I said, what level are you going to focus on? And he said, oh, John, can you watch me do my neck? Yeah, what level are you doing? 
I, I'm just doing it. No, you're not. Are you doing C2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7? Which one are you doing? Yeah, because I'm not going to watch you if you say to me, I'm just going to manipulate the neck. Yeah, it's what level? Because when you do your notes, you can't put a, I manipulated the neck. It's what level did you manipulate? Yeah, all right, so, um, so that's, you know, you have to focus on it. And if it takes you a year to learn it, it takes you a year to learn it. Or it takes you five years, it takes you 10 years. Just, just take your time. So from there, so what I want you to try to do is this spinous process and come over. So now, rather than all my fingers, I'm not. I'm literally typically use my pads on my middle. These are so sensitive to touch, okay? Yeah, this area in here. So you're gonna come from the spinous process onto the articular, okay? So I'm mainly on these two there. So I'm almost doing this. And what I'm gonna be doing and it almost fits perfectly within the articular. And what I'm thinking about doing is that if I come onto C2 and come across C2, I am literally watching, okay? So I'm on C2 with my fingers, okay? My index finger's on, on a little bit, but I'm, I'm on my middle finger. Watch what I'm doing, okay? So I'm literally simply gonna push her neck one way. It's so subtle, you might not see much motion. Okay, so I'm literally pushing one way and I'm pushing the other way. Do you see that? If I do it grossly, I'll do it this way. Okay, so that's a gross movement. But then what that is doing is moving all the vertebra. And you're not focusing on C2 and 3, you're focusing on the cervical side shift. Okay, so what you want to try to do is maybe do it grossly to start with so you can understand the general motion, but then what I want you to do is try to focus on one vertebra moving independently on the vertebra below. Okay, so from here, so I'm pushing C2 to the left. The facet joint on the left, in theory, will open, and the facet joint on the right, in theory, will close. If I'm pushing to the right, the right facet joint will open, and the left facet joint will close. Happy with that? Yeah. Now, so what you're simply doing is doing lightly pushing one way and the other way. Now, if there is a restriction, it's hard to know what a restriction is if you've not done much of this. But it's quite easy when you think about it, because that's all you were doing is comparing this way against this way. Mm -hmm. And if they feel the same, they're probably the same. Mm -hmm. If you feel I use more effort going this way, compared to this way, then we have found a facet restriction. Yes? We have found a facet restriction. So, the spine is in neutral, okay? So we're not in extension and we're not in flexion, we're in a neutral position. Neutral, according to Friot, is where the facet joints are idling. So they're not closed in extension and they're not open in flexion. So they idle between the two. Happy with that? Hmm. Yeah. Now, remember as I'm doing this movement, <coughs> okay, now I don't know if you can notice, you might be able to feel it. It's easier going to her left, yeah, mm. yes? Yes. And it is going to the right. So I've already found a restriction between C2 and C3. So what I'm trying to do is trying to mobilize this way and it's easier going to the left but when I push to the right there's a natural blockage I feel like I've got to put more pressure going to her right now this is for some this is the complex bit okay think about it now, okay so it's happy to go this way so the left facet is happy to open and the right facet is happy to close because she's going this way do you visualize that yes the problem is, is going this way. So we got potentially two issues. One's on the right or one's on the left. So choice number one, it doesn't want to go this way. So either the right side facet does not want to open, so it could be fixed, closed, or the left side doesn't want to close, so it might be fixed, open. Well done. Mm -hmm. So how might we differentiate between the right side or the left side? And it is. What might we do? 
flexion or extension. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, we know, but it doesn't want to go this way, mm -hmm. but it's happy to go this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so if I extend her neck, so I'm trying to encourage closure. closure. Yeah, and I do the same technique. Okay, and it's actually easier. Mm. Okay, so it means that the left side is happy to close. So I know it's probably not the left side because it's happy to close. Okay, so if I take my patient into a bit of flexion, let me do it. Okay, so if I'm, I'm using my stomach a little bit just to hold an inflection, I know the same technique here. And now it doesn't want to, it, it goes this way. But it doesn't want to go to the right inflection. So what do you think is wrong? So the, the right side open, so it must be fixed. Closed. So the right side facet is closed. Yeah. So the right side facet is closed. On here. I use a mnemonic for this, okay? Yeah. So so, if we're in flexion and it's restricted, I normally say FOC, okay? Flexion, opposite, closed. So, obviously I'm pushing this way from this side to this side. So, if we're in flexion, so flexion, opposite is closed, okay? Whereas if it's in extension, I normally say extension, same side open, so like ESO. So extension, same, open. Okay, whether you wanna remember or not. Okay, you could just say flexion is opposite, extension is same, so as long as like F-O-E-S or F-O-C, yeah? Uh, E-O-S, yeah? Extension open, or ESO, same side. Okay, now, however, when we come to say treat it, I might be looking at say the right side to try to open, but as I'm literally just doing this gliding movement, if I took an interflection and I literally did this movement one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten yeah, times, or from here I do an MET. So slowly, it doesn't really matter whether we push, slowly push to your right a little bit. So she is literally just translating right. Okay, which is activating the right side. Yeah, relax for 10 seconds, breathe in. And as she breathes out, I'm literally just gliding. So I'm doing an MET in flexion to facilitate what? opening on the right side okay yeah. so I'm literally just passively trying and it's so subtle when you've got like an acute neck and you've got say neuropathy in the arms these techniques are lovely because they're just slowly mobilizing the neck yeah that sort of thing later on yeah when we come on to it so let's say for instance you've decided that C2 is restricted on C3 so you might want to open that right side. Yeah, you okay for me just to gently open something? Yeah. Yeah. So if I wanted to open that right side, let me just let me just see Sorry. if I can so I'd use my MCP joint, okay? So I find C2. So I'd come on to C2 to that side in here. Okay, just close this. Okay, there you go. It's already clicked. Okay, so from there, let's see if I can just do a gentle, so if I can just just gently open it. And I like to do a gentle, so, I, so I'm in this position in flexion, rotation from there. Okay, just go with it. And then from there. You okay? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah. So that's opening that right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I did it from my assessment, <clears throat> knowing it's the right side that's closed, and I want to open it. Mm -hmm. And we normally open in a rotation and the manipulation would have been done towards the opposite eye, mm. yeah? And then what I would do now is, I'd now slide, 
Okay, and now it glides quite nicely. Okay, this is still a little bit on that left side. Okay, yeah. I might be tempted just to close the left side a little bit. Um, but if I decided that the left side was more open, okay, from this left side, instead of doing a rotation to, I think that's where you're gonna work, I'd come in here, okay, there, and I do a, and I close it on that side, all right? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, <laughs> okay. It's, quite, it's quite scary. Yeah, I'm glad that worked, it looks quite cooler. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it worked. I'm glad it worked when it did. It's kind of the sounds from my brain, so. Yeah, yeah. So basically, on that right side, I showed you that I can open in rotation, mm. and that left side I can close in side bending. Mm. Side bending. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. So, but I'm hoping that I show it to you in in quite a gentle way, that you can assess and yeah, okay, that's where it is. Just feel it. Yeah, maybe you want to close it, just, okay, without, yeah, but the most important bit is that it's an assessment into a mob, and if the mob's not working, we can add in a HVT, mm. okay? It doesn't mean it's like, you know, the, the icing on the cake, it sort of is, yeah, but it doesn't mean you all, all have to do it every time, yeah? Happy with that for a minute? So what I'd like you to do is obviously not my HVT yet, yeah, because that's later on. Yeah, that's, that's you know, the carrot on the cake, if you like. Yeah, the, the last bit. I know you all want to learn that straight away, but um, I think it, I, li I like to teach it in a way that it's not the answer to everything. Yeah. So the assessment and the mobilization is almost more important than the finale. Okay, you might not agree, yeah, but you will agree in time. <laughs> okay, once you've done thousands and thousands of patients, you'll agree at some point. Yeah. But maybe maybe not yet. Okay, so from there, lightly, okay, find the spinous process, come on to the articular, and what I want you to do is, if you don't find anything on C2, drop down one level, as in one finger, okay, so find the level and just go to one finger below, and then, and then glide, C3, okay, if you don't find anything, go down a level, and just gently, until you find something. Mm. Okay, until you find a restriction, because you will find a restriction. Maybe give a patient to help you, and then try an extension. Let's say I'm pushing this side now, okay? Let's say I'm pushing, say, C3 or 4, and I'm pushing this way, and it doesn't want to go this way in extension, and I know it's the right side, but doesn't want to close, so it must be open. And if I go into flexion, okay, and it's easy in flexion, then I know that the opposite side is happy to open. Because flexion initiates opening, mm -hmm. so if it doesn't want to open, it must be fixed close, and it must be fixed close on the opposite side to the side you're pushing at. It's heavy going, this one. Yeah, it's like, remember, you're, you are therapy detect. You can't just go, oh, yeah, let's just massage your shoulders. Mm -hmm. All right, you're trying to work things out. Yeah, you're trying to detect what might be going on. You know, and this is complex. Yeah, the cervical spine is complex. It doesn't have to be that complex if you keep it simple. Just think that's all I'm doing is just motion testing. C2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6. Yeah, and if it's restricted, I just extend them and do it. And, then, and I flex them. It's just going to work out if I'm in flexion, it's on the opposite side. If I'm in extension, it's on the same side. Yeah, extension, same. Flexion, opposite. Yes, FO. Keep it simple. Yeah. And then from there, you literally will do a few treatments in flexion or extension, trying to facilitate movement. Yeah. Do a little bit of an MET, contract, relax. And just subtly be as less as you know less as best in terms of pressure all good not really but have a go mm. <laughs>